YouTube. Happy 4th of July. I am about to head down to my garden and harvest some stuff and then I'm going to be spending the next few hours in the kitchen and I thought I would have you guys hang out with me. First, let's go get the stuff out of the garden that we need to prepare for our family gathering this afternoon. I just got done milking the goats a little while ago and Jeremiah is finishing up feeding everything. Our family is coming over um, early this afternoon to have a cookout for Independence Day and I am planning on making some um, different dishes from our food uh, that we grew. I am not going to go through everything um, right now because I just don't have time. It is uh, late in the morning and I really need to get to cooking some stuff. However, I'm going to make salsa today and caprese salad. So I'm going to go through and pick all of the tomatoes that I see which are uh, ripe enough to pick. So I am about to pick the biggest tomato I've ever grown. Um, this is on this climbing triple crop plant, which it has about four plants right here. And it's produced so much, this variety. But this tomato, it has two massive ones on it and one's ready. I'm so excited to weigh it and see how much it, it weighs. Look at that. It's gotta be at least two pounds. That's massive. It's a beast my face. <laughs> There's another one on the same plant that's the same size. It's crazy. <sighs> Alright, so I am going to be making salsa out of most of those tomatoes. I'll leave some of them out for fresh eating. But now I'm going to pick all the cherries that are ripe. And this is what I will use to make our caprese salad. ready for this this is the largest cherry tomato harvest I've had so far this season that is a full basket okay the next thing that I need out of the garden today is some basil because um, I am making this caprese salad, so I'll need basil for that. And I'm just going to pick the tops off of um, this basil plant. That way it will force it to grow bushier. In doing so, I pick off the places where it would be starting to flower, going to seed. And that puts my pod basket kind of out of commission for the rest of this video because it is overflowing. So I'm going to go through real quick and cut all of the okra that I have ripe and I already have some cucumbers in the house but I see some that have gotten really big so I'm going to go ahead and pick those too. Growing okra is posing some challenges for me because I just don't think I'm attentive, <laughs> attentive enough. Um, it seems to be one of those things that has like a 15 minute window in which it's actually the right size to harvest. That may be a little bit of an exaggeration, but quite seriously, this is about the eighth massive okra that I have come across this year, that by the time I see it, it's just completely unusable because they get really hard um, when they get to the, you know, alien weapon stage. Okay, I did get some harvest that's usable. Now, the last thing that I need to get out of the garden is some peppers for my salsa. Uh, the particular recipe that I do is the same salsa recipe I've been making for a very long time. Um, and I generally will use serranos if I'm just having to go buy peppers, but my serranos aren't producing yet, but my jalapenos are. So today um, I'm going to be getting jalapenos. 
It's a good thing I don't need very many because I don't have very many. My peppers just haven't done very well this year, but I have a handful and that's all I need for my salsa recipe. Actually, I'm also going to check my squash plants because um, squash is great on the grill. And since that's what we're going to be doing today, here we'll just cut this up, put a little oil on it, uh, garlic powder, salt, and pepper. And it is absolutely delicious. Just grilled until, you know, I like to put a few grill marks on it, but not cook it real long. I like to stay a little bit crispy or uh, crunchy. So definitely a good way to use up some of that summer squash. It is so hot and my garden needs water, but um, I'm not gonna do that right now. It'll be fine until this evening. This basket of tomatoes is very, very heavy. Um, you may be wondering how much we are getting like weekly. Now, I did my farm tour on Saturday evening and I picked um, I picked that many slicers, but not that many cherries. And now it's Wednesday and I'm picking that many again. I've picked a few since from between Saturday to now, but not a lot. So, I mean, roughly two and a half or so of these baskets a week would probably be um, an accurate guess. Apron change and a cold drink of water are both completely in order. I don't mean to state the obvious, but it is incredibly, incredibly, incredibly important to hydrate if you're going to be working outside in the heat like this. I drink this thing three times over every day, and if I don't, I start getting sick because it is so easy to get dehydrated whenever it's so stinking hot. I am really eager to um, weigh my massive tomato. Let's get it set up. Okay. The moment of truth. Oh my goodness. Oh. One pound, 14.7 ounces. Oh, so close to two pounds. That still takes the record for the largest tomato that I have ever grown. And for those of you that may have missed it, that is climbing triple crop, which is actually, it's, it's a more recent heirloom, but it's still considered an heirloom. Um, and they have really good flavor too. Also, just because I'm curious, I want to, um, I want to weigh my cherry tomatoes. Um, I didn't get a big enough bowl. Okay, let's try this again. So we're at four pounds, 10 ounces, and that's after a handful of them got eaten as soon as I put the basket down on the counter the kids kind of swarmed them so I think that I can safely say that I harvested five pounds of cherry tomatoes today which means I'm probably gonna have to figure out something else to do with them other than caprese salad because though caprese salad is delicious I don't know if anybody is going to want to eat that much of it okay so on the plan for today I am doing the caprese salad, which is tomatoes, basil, and mozzarella, but I'm making the mozzarella out of our goat's milk. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do today is make this cheap box cake, because I'm gonna make a poke cake with that, and although I would like to impress you with all of my from scratch cooking, I wanna keep it real, and while we do most, uh, most of our food is whole foods, we still eat uh, processed junk occasionally, because I sincerely believe that moderation is really key when it comes to that sort of thing. And for me, in raising kids, I know that I can't control their diets all the time and I really just want to empower them to make good choices 
um, not just make rules that they have to follow. So I don't like things to be taboo. And while I don't buy this sort of thing regularly on things like the 4th of July, I think it's good to have, have you know, little splurges like that just here and there. Actually, it looks like I don't have to make the cake because Jackson just got here. Say hi, Jackson. It's my oldest son. He is going to make the cake and I'm going to start cutting tomatoes and putting them on a roasting pan for salsa. Okay, so when I do the salsa, like the original um, ratio that I normally do if I go buy this stuff is about six pounds of tomatoes to one onion, you know, a handful of peppers, depending on the spiciness of the pepper, a few garlic cloves, and then the cilantro and all that stuff added. Uh, we roast all of the tomatoes, onion, peppers, and garlic first. Now I have a lot of tomatoes today, so I will link a very old blog post to when I first made this recipe um, and shared it. What you doing is? All right, just a little interesting fact. When I uh, trim these and I have like a yucky spot that has some seeds attached, I always make sure I feed these to my chickens because chickens will actually carry tomato seeds in their droppings and you will end up with wild tomato plants if you free range your chickens, um, which is cool because then the tomatoes have, the chickens have more tomatoes to eat because they grow where they free range and then they continue to spread those seeds. Uh, we have tomato plants. Last year in our chicken run, we ended up with like 60 plants that were just growing wild. So I thought that was really neat. So that's my second tray of tomatoes and actually those were the tomatoes that I picked the other day. Um, I still have all the ones for today. So I'm going to go through here and I have a few like these that had some cracks and I'm going to definitely use these first in my salsa. Um, anything that had a weird spot because these are going to rot a lot faster whereas some of these have just a little bit of time before they just have to be used. I'll save those because if I decide not to make the full amount of salsa, um, these tomatoes will have more time before I have to decide what to do with them. Okay, so we're going to use this to make the holes. This is a thermometer, we're not actually taking the temperature. So just go through and just every inch or so, you see what I'm doing? Yeah. Okay, so you need to poke holes throughout the whole thing. Um, you can, they don't have to be like perfect. Oh, okay. Alright, so I feel pretty good about how this tray of tomatoes looks right now. You're just roasting them long enough for them to shrivel up and for a good bit of the juices to burn off this caramelizes the sugars and um, this is the way I like to make salsa when you're using big slicer tomatoes because they are typically more juicy than like a paste tomato and um, I've found that whenever you roast them like this the skins get really soft so you can blend it you don't have to peel them and uh, it's just a lot easier. So I'm going to pour these in a bowl and fill this tray up again with more tomatoes and then my onions, garlic, and peppers. Up until this point, I have not grown onions or garlic myself. I am hoping to remedy that and we'll be planting garlic this fall um, and am hoping to do onions next year as well. It's just something I haven't gotten to yet. So even though most of what is in the salsa I grew in the garden, I did not grow the garlic and onions or the cilantro because it is so hot here. Cilantro just goes to seed, um, I mean like three seconds after you put it in the ground. Since I had such a crazy amount of tomatoes, I went ahead and made this little salad which is um, d cherries that are sliced in half, uh, sliced cucumbers, onions, and I'm about to just mix up a little dressing of vinegar, um, a little bit of sugar, a little bit of oil, and some salt, and put that over that salad. I just made a small amount, because we already have a whole lot of food for our cookout today. It may or may not get eaten, but it gets better overnight, so I'll eat it tomorrow and over the next couple of days if nobody else. Okay, so I've got a cup of water in here, as well as a cup of apple cider vinegar, a tablespoon of sugar, 
and a tablespoon of olive oil. Mix it all together, poured it over this. I'm gonna stick this in the fridge while we wait on everything else. Ow. Okay, so the poke cake is in the fridge chilling with the jello on it. The vinegar, tomato, cucumber salad is in the fridge with all the flavors melding. All the tomatoes, onions, peppers, and garlic are in the oven, roasting, getting ready for salsa. And now I'm about to start on the mozzarella. Okay, this isn't gonna be like a tutorial on how to make mozzarella because I think I'm already getting kind of long in this video. However, I will link below um, the Pioneer Woman's website. That's how the method that I use for doing this. And if you are interested in seeing me do a step-by-step -step tutorial, I would be glad to make that video. Just let me know if that's something that you would like to see. Now we're gonna start with a heavy bottom still pot. I'm gonna get a gallon of milk, which is gonna be um, the freshest milk I have in my fridge. It's gonna be from this morning and last night. Making mozzarella is my most favorite way to use excess milk whenever we have it, which is somewhat often um, with having all of our goats in milk. We get a few gallons a day. We do give some to some of our family, but uh, mozzarella, I make it probably about once a week or so, and I love it. It is so good. All of our tomatoes, onions, peppers, and garlic are out of the oven they're all roasted it smells amazing in here so i'm actually going to let this cool off just a bit so it's a lot easier to manage so we still have a lot to do i'm gonna have to pause because i have baby goats that need to eat so let's go feed them real quick and then we'll get back to the kitchen hey guys ladies and gents y'all ready for your lunch okay sorry for the weird awkward Yay. angle but hungry goats are just completely belligerent creatures at all ages. So the goal right now is to just get the bottles in the mouth. Oh my gosh. So I multitask in my life just out of base necessity. However, it's not one of my strong suits. Right now I'm going to attempt to blend the, the salsa while watching the tip for the mozzarella and just hope that I don't ruin anything. The milk got just a couple degrees warmer than what I intended it to, but I think it's gonna be okay, hopefully. Okay, there's my salsa all done and ready to go. Um, I tasted it and I felt like the tomato flavor is so intense, I decided to hold off on the honey um, because it's really sweet. I do generally add that if I use off-season tomatoes. And I added a few more peppers that were not roasted to offset the tomato flavor because it was really intense. But that's almost a, that's well, no, that's about a gallon of salsa. And um, I'm not gonna bother canning this because it's the first time I've made it this summer. Um, if I can it, it'll all get opened and eaten in the next week anyway, because everybody will be really excited about it. So we'll eat this batch and I'll can the next batch, because by then they'll all be over it. Most methods of making mozzarella require that you heat the whey back up and then um, dip the mozzarella back into the whey, stretching it as it heats up. But Pioneer Woman's method is to put it in the microwave. Um, that second part you put in the microwave and I really like it. This is still just a little bit lumpy So I might microwave it one more time to get all of the uh, lumps out But this is delicious The pope cake is good and chilled so I'm about to top it with some good old cool whip some fruit Not gonna lie Feeling pretty clever about this right now. All right, so I got my salsa, my mozzarella, my tomato, onion, and cucumber salad. I'm gonna cut up some separate tomatoes and basil. Use some uh, balsamic reduction to make the caprese salad here in just a bit. But as for right now, I am out of time. 
So I thank you guys for hanging out with me today. I hope you have a beautiful holiday, enjoying your family and celebrating our freedom. Until next time.